Quite possibly the best APRS comment ever. Looking for an amplifier for the ICOM 705. A 17-foot whip versus a DX Commander. And a window screen and a DX Commander. All that coming up on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike. You are watching KMRD Radio Stuff. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. We got four things to talk about today. Let's dive right in. This first one just made me laugh my butt off from my APRS is the most worthless mode in ham radio video. This guy writes 124 grains. APRS is so me and the homies can send each other good nights without waking up the wives. <laughs> I've read this a hundred times. <laughs> I crack up every time I read it. <laughs> oh, isn't laughter great? Oh man, thanks so much, dude. That just that is the icing on the cake for that video. It really is. Thank you uh, for <laughs> Next, we have a question about an ICOM 705 and an amplifier. This viewer is writing in, I recently purchased an ICOM 705, congratulations, and I'm considering purchasing one of the portable 50 watt amplifiers. I was wondering which one, if any, you would recommend. Since I've come across your videos, I've watched many of them and really enjoy them. Well, thank you so much. So I only have uh, one, since we're talking about 50 watt amplifiers, I only have one and I've honestly only ever used one, and that is this right here. This is the MX P50M, which you can find on uh, uh, the eBay. Comes straight from China, so you know it's good. Uh, there is a modification internally that is suggested uh, that you do with this. I did a video on it, and I'll link it right there. Uh, from Kevin, uh, KB9RLW is the one that came up with, uh, with this design. Um, it's 160 bucks or something. So there's there's a couple. So I, I was watching uh, here. Let's hop over to the internet machine and I'll, I'll show you a couple. So here's the MXP50. It's really advertises like a 45 watt amp. Close enough. Uh, so it's 160 bucks straight out of China. MXP50M. Uh, my good friend, the Smoking Ape, did a review of this and found that it is, uh, or he suggested through his scientific findings that it might be slightly less than spectrally pure, which I would probably say is going to be exactly the same thing for this amplifier right here. This is the Micro PA50, 50 watt, does uh, uh, 160 all the way to about halfway through uh, 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 10, uh, 10 meters. Uh, Matt over at Tech Minds did a really great review of this video. This has a nice uh, like LED screen. Uh, where you can kind of see what's going on with it. Pretty cool little amplifier. Uh, I don't know anything about it because I've not used it, but same price range, 161 bucks. Again, uh, from China. So uh, you probably have to wait a month or so for any of these. But uh, I'll, I'll link Matt's video from Tech Minds in the in the in the show notes here if you want to watch that on this amplifier. Uh, and then there's another one that I came across. This is from a company called 60dbm. 60dbm.com. And uh, a little bit more expensive at 245 bucks. Uh, I, I didn't find a whole lot of information, but there was a pretty positive review of this on Eham. And this is called the Neptune 50 watt HF amplifier. This comes from Ukraine. And it looks like these guys are actually uh, uh, a little more concerned about, you know, spectral purity and all that kind of stuff. So this is probably going to be the better quality amplifier out there. I, I would I would assume they're all about the same size. These these amplifiers are pretty small. They pretty much fit in the uh, in the palm of your hand. But um, those are the three that I'm familiar with. And I'm just going to throw this one out here. If you want to spend an exorbitant amount of money, this is a 100 watt amplifier. This is the Zygu XPA 125B. This is actually a pretty darn cool uh, amplifier. It's like 550 bucks though, so way more expensive than the others. Has an incredible built-in tuner, and it's pretty easy to interface with the 705 
Uh, there's a couple different interfaces on the market that you can get to work with this, but um, this this is a really cool amplifier. So I, uh, this peaks out some bands, 125 watts. It, it varies a little bit by band, but it, probably between like 90 and 105 watts, or 100, excuse me, 125 watts with maybe five watts driving it. So uh, that is a really cool amplifier. So I'm not the most well-versed in amplifiers, but I mean, this little guy is is pretty darn slick, the MXP50. So, but check out TechMind's video on that other one. So, thanks for writing in. Hopefully, uh, that at least kind of steers you in the right direction. And thanks so much for writing in. Next, we have a question about a whip or DX Commander. He says, hey, Mike, can you give me your thoughts on using a 17-foot whip versus a DX Commander for pod activations? I believe the whip would be easier to deploy, but the DX Commander would require a less in use tuning when changing bands. Rock out with your Glock out. Oh wait, I meant POTA on. Thanks for your input. So, I mean, you kind of just answered your own question there. The 17 foot whip initially, of course is gonna be a whole heck of a lot easier to set up, especially on 20 meters, uh, than the DX Commander. The DX Commander takes me about 15 minutes to set up, where it would probably take maybe five, six, seven minutes, if that, to set up a 17-foot whip and a whole bunch of radio wires. Where the benefit of the DX Commander really comes in is when you're a guy like me whose uh, strong suit is certainly not patience. And especially like a lot of guys, when you get out and you first start activating POTA, what does everybody do? You look at the POTA spotting page, you look for park to parks, everybody's on different bands. Well, if you're on 20 or 17 or 15, whatever, you got to unplug on the 17 foot whip, you got to unplug your coax, hook your analyzer up to it, walk over to the antenna, adjust it, get it for the right SWR. Then you got to unscrew it from the analyzer, plug it back into your radio then tune to the frequency only to find out that you can't hear them. Then you unplug your coax, plug it into your analyzer, go back to your antenna, tune it to the band that you wanted to operate on, unplug it from the analyzer, plug it back into the radio, and then start calling CQ. You've just wasted so much time when you could have just set up uh, the, the DX Commander, okay? I like multi-band resonant antennas for a reason. One, they're effective. So either a DX Commander or an NFET Halfway, we'll throw that in here. You spend 15 minutes setting it up. So like, say twice as long as setting up the 17 foot vertical, but then you're done. Say some rare DX country comes up. Maybe like I need Alaska for, for hunted parks on the air, okay? So maybe I'm on 20, they're on 40 or 17 or any other band. All I have to do is change my radio and done. I am there. And I can know in about three nanoseconds if I can hear him or not, because I switch over to the band, I tune up to the frequency, and he's either there or he isn't. Then, if I work him, great. If not, that's great, too. I can hop back down to whatever band I was working. Maybe I've worked everybody on 20 meters, and I want to switch to 40 meters. I can do that in an instant, just by touching my screen and hitting 40, or the AB button, because maybe I have 40 already there. So... <laughs> You can't really compare the two. I mean, yes, a 17-foot whip is going to have a, a, a smaller form factor in terms of, you know, packing it up and, and lightweight and stuff like that. But the, the, the ability to have, like, instant gratification with a multiband antenna like the DX Commander, to me, I mean, there's a reason you don't see me out using a 17-foot whip. Yeah, I have them. Yeah, I have used them. But... DX Commander, Pactenna, there's a reason I keep going back to those antennas. Because they work, they're multi-band, and they're resonant. And I am very much an instant gratification kind of guy. So there you have it. I hope that helps. And now, here's another question about the DX Commander that ties into something that has been like the talk of the town in ham radio lately. This viewer is saying, hey, Mike, I've seen everyone doing the window screen ground plane on the Wolf River coil system. How would that work with a DX Commander Expedition? Looks like you could wrap the screen around the pole for transmit. Thanks for your videos, Andrew. AI5FK. Thanks, Andrew. So unless you've been living under a rock, the, the talk of the town, Michael, KB9VBR, did a video 
where instead of using radio wires for his vertical antenna, like the 17-foot whip that we were just talking about, or the Wolf River coils, could you use a metal screen, like your window screen? Literally, your window screen. Just in the last 24 hours, I've gotten two emails about this. This is one of them. Uh, I've gotten so many people asking me to do this. I'm like, well, Michael's already done it. Why <laughs> Why would I do the same thing that he's done? But I don't know. Maybe people want validation from me. I, I don't know. I, I will say I don't know. I've never done it. I don't see myself as a kind of guy who would be like, damn, I want to take a window screen out into the field. That's just not my, not my jam, as Josh would say. Let me explain why. But I'm, I still might do it. So if you guys really need to see me do a video with a window screen as a, a, as a ground radial, put some kind of comment in the chats of this video. Um, I don't care if it's just do the window screen. It's just short and sweet. So here's the deal. Here's my DX Commander Expedition, okay? I keep it like this with the, with the metal on it, okay? So I can just set it up nice and quick, okay? Now, could you hook this up to a window screen? Absolutely. This whole bottom plate is where you connect the ground radials to the, to the little uh, uh, wing nuts here. So it can be very easy, easy to just attach a wire from here to uh, a window screen. That part's easy. Then he's also suggesting wrapping the window screen around the mast for, uh, you know, for, for packing it up, right? That's where my OCD would come in. I'm now I've not used the window screen, but I just I've seen Michael's videos and I'm like, so you got this thing that that, that is going to roll up. It's going to have memory. You got to find something to, to flatten it out. Um, here's, this is everything. This is all the wires, all the spreaders, radial wires, radiating elements, everything. This is my setup for the DX Commander. I mean, this is as big as my head, right? Very compact. So one, I wouldn't be able to fit a screen in this, even if I took out the radial wires. Could I wrap it around the mast? Maybe. But then you got a whole bunch of wrapping of, of screen around a mast. It's sharp. I guarantee you I'll cut myself on it. That's just... That's just how my life goes. Um, as to the effectiveness of it, I would have to say, I mean, if it works with the 17-foot whip and the Wolf River coils and things like that, the science behind these two antennas is not is not that much different, okay? Uh, in fact, it's pretty much the same thing. So I would, I would guess it would work. I just don't want to fuss with a freaking screen. That just doesn't seem appealing to me. It really doesn't. Maybe I'll, I mean, I'm kind of convincing myself maybe I want to try it uh, just doing this, but I don't know. Um, let me know if you want me to do this and, and, and I'll consider it. It just doesn't seem like, I'm, I'm all about small, compact. I mean, a screen is lightweight, but who wants to deal with a big freaking screen? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not convinced. Uh, I am a stubborn German. I'll tell you that. Uh, so a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of my feelings could just be coming from that. Um, but it, it just does. Just looking at it being done doesn't seem like something I would want to do personally. Will it work? Probably. I don't see why it wouldn't. So I don't know. That's that's my thoughts on it. So <laughs> thank you very much. What was your name? Uh, Andrew, thanks for writing in. I appreciate it, Andrew. And guys, if you have a question for me, don't hesitate. Shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have your question answered on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you again on another episode of k and Radio Stuff. 73, guys. We're going into the fire swamp. But aren't there ROUSs there? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist.